All right, I believe we're now live. Welcome, everyone. I can see we've already uh, actually got 12 people in the chat. Let me uh, set the chat to live here. We got uh, Teal Guy, Austin, Void. Can you run the train you did in the last video? The Shikansen? Yeah, we can definitely run that. I'll probably run it a bit later on because uh, I suspect it might be requested multiple times. But we can definitely make that happen. Moment, we've got a couple uh, freight trains operating. Actually, uh, running the layout off DCC. I also uh, got the Bombardier Talent set out a couple days ago. I haven't run that in probably over a year, so I was just having some fun running that around the layout. So might get that going at some point too. Caboose, nineteen seventy three. Hello, Norman Corey. Welcome. And Boost Trains, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. How are you? Can you run any trams? Um, I don't know. Does this count as a tram? I think it does. Thank you so much for the uh, super chat, uh, Lewis Trains. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Why do you have trains? Aren't consoles more interesting? Do you see younger people in your hobby? Uh... I used to actually be into video games, and I still play them occasionally. But uh, no, I prefer model railroading, and um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know how many youngsters are getting into the hobby, but they definitely exist. I finally got my four by eight sheet of plywood. That's exciting. You can almost see a layout the second you see a 4x8 sheet. I'm going to have to go out to the hardware store soon. I need to buy some uh, materials because I think I want to add a similar fascia to this to that layout. I don't know. I might go out and do that tomorrow. Congratulations on 100,000. Thank you so much, uh, 2926. Really appreciate that. I can't believe the channel got that far. I'm planning on doing some sort of a video to uh, celebrate. I don't know exactly how, but I would... Really, uh, I don't know, maybe like to share some of the history of the channel as well as um, acknowledge a lot of the people who uh, sort of were supporting it early on. I love that blue and white bus on the layout. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, it's uh, I've got two of them. I got one right here and there's another somewhere else. I don't know where it is at the moment. Oh, it's over at the Hershey factory. They're both uh, Greyhound buses. My uh, family way back when actually had some history with Greyhounds, so um, they're sort of a, uh, a nod to that. Do you plan to upload a track plan of the full layout? Uh, if the layout I'm building, yeah, I would like to build a make a track plan because uh, I just wrote the track plan down on a piece of paper. There wasn't anything official, but it would be good if I could actually measure out, you know, what materials you need. Cause there've been a lot of people who want to build that layout. In fact, at least two people have claimed they've already started construction on a copy of that layout. So it'd be good if I could uh, specify what exactly you need. Uh, as for this layout, I don't plan to uh, make such a thing though. Vintage man, Vic, good day. Congratulations on a hundred thousand. Thank you. A prominent high school in my area actually has a train club where they do model railroading. My grandson is stoked about it. Did you get the silver award from YouTube yet? Uh, well, first of all, that's awesome. Um, um, I probably would have liked school a lot more as a kid if they had a model railroading club. That it seems like a great thing, honestly, because I think model railroading can really teach you a lot of skills, um, you know, on, on how to do carpentry and things like that. Uh, as for the YouTube award though, uh, no, I, I haven't got it. Um, there is an application you have to go through, so uh, I'm not, we'll have to see if the channel passes or not, but uh, they did verify the account, so that was a treat. Canadian behavior, welcome, thank you. This is a common problem. I have a Tenshoto 484. It runs well on straight track, but won't run on curves. Okay, I mean, if you're talking about derailing, it might just be the size of the locomotive, but um, 
A ten shoto. The ten shotos are made out of brass. If it's getting, if it's just stopping on corners, my guess is that there's something making contact with the body on a corner. So uh, check the pilot trucks because I've seen this happen on multiple uh, steam locomotives, brass steam engines, where when they go into a corner, the pilot truck makes contact with the um, outer casing of the cylinders, and it causes a short circuit. So. Um, I would, uh, I would suggest checking there. Sometimes you can just add a bit of electrical tape and it will fix the problem. Where's the cat? I don't know where he's at. He's probably sleeping up in my room. Do you still have that weird Lionel Bachman Canadian National GS4? I always wondered what happened to that thing. Yes, I do, actually. A lot of people have been asking me about that. I'll go get it. Um, here it is, well, the top just popped off, but uh, one day this popped off and I realized there's no plate for the commutator, so clearly somebody else already tried to work on this, which is not a very good sign, so uh, I'm willing to give it a crack myself and see if we can revive it, but I'm not optimistic about it. Hey, some tea, is it possible to run your very first locomotive to celebrate hitting 100,000? Yeah, I don't see why not. Let me just go see if I can find the front of that boiler. It's not bouncing to the layout. Oh, here it is. If I, lo if I lose this now, I'm never going to find it again. Congrats on 100,000. Thank you, I appreciate that. All right, there it is. Davy Digger, hey SMT, and would an inexpensive Tyco set be worth buying just for the track and accessories, rolling stock, even though even though the locomotive is not very good? I mean, if you can find one for like fifteen dollars, maybe. But like the the Tyco sets in general were not very well made. Like some of the accessories are kind of cool, like the buildings and stuff like that. You don't have to worry about those having problems, obviously, but. Um, Tyco used steel track, which is notorious for having problems and their controllers were not that great. So I, I would say if you're just looking to, you know, buy some budget materials, you might be better off just trying to find them a la carte used or, um, just buy a cheap new train set off Amazon. I mean, you can find uh, used track pretty cheap, uh, even nickel silver, you can find it for like 50 cents a piece or less. Uh, at some places, I know some places you can buy like an entire bundle of it for like a dollar. So just keep your uh, eyes open at train shows. There's usually somebody getting rid of some. Can you show your Amtrak collection? Um, it's kind of tricky to do in one in a uh, live stream because there's multiple uh, spots where the locomotives are at. But I actually did a video on my entire Amtrak collection a couple of years ago. So if you want to have a look, you can see it there. Do you have any ON30? Not at the moment, but I'm uh, on the market to buy an ON30 piece. I, I'm pretty sure I could run ON30 on the layout. Uh, the real question would be if it would fit through uh this bridge i don't know if the girders would be too close but other than that i don't see why not hey smt i was wondering do you still have that flat car somebody sent you with the channel's logo I, as a matter of fact i do yeah it's uh, up here on the shelf right here this is probably one of the coolest things anybody has ever sent in and uh i don't know i just thought it would look quite at home up there which it does
Have you ever been to Erie, Pennsylvania? I haven't been to Erie, Pennsylvania. I've uh, been to Scranton before, though. Anyways, we'll get this uh, Canadian Pacific train off the main line. We'll get my uh, Canadian National one going here. How do you find train shows? A good one will be advertised one way or another. Um, but the, I find the best way to find out about train shows is, is just to have somebody in the know. So um, if you go to like a train store or something, ask the people there, hey, do you know about any train shows coming up? Because, you know, they're probably linked with people who are in the model railroading community. And sometimes they know when uh, other people don't. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, most of the time, whenever I uh, find out about a train show, it's either through somebody at a train store or through uh, one of my train buddies. Uh, okay, it looks like we actually had a bit of a short circuit there, but... When's the Christmas competition starting? Uh, I don't know. I, I think that I usually started off in early December, if I'm not mistaken. So it will probably be the same case this year. What are the container cars? They're uh, intermodal cars. That's when you got a derailment. There we go. There's a train show at the Big E in Springfield, Massachusetts on the weekend of the 28th and 29th. Well, there you have it for anybody who's in that area. Um, if you have any Thomas stuff, no uh, no Thomas stuff on the layout. I, I have the old wooden ones from when I was a kid, but uh, that's it. ATC, cold boy, welcome. Uh, SMT, you should visit the North Carolina Transportation Museum. They've got lots of old great equipment that they operate. Do you have 611 or are you planning to get one? One comes up at a good price, maybe. Um, most of them are made by Bachman, so I'm a little less inclined. I'm working on a post-war Lionel steam locomotive, and it buzzes but doesn't run. The wheels will turn with no power. I clean the commutator, but it doesn't want to work. If it's making a buzzing sound, but it's not going anywhere, to me that sounds like a stuck E unit, um, which is basically a drum which has to rotate. It controls the direction of the locomotive. So you uh, could either replace that or you could bypass it, which is what I did on one of my locomotives. There's a tutorial somewhere online on how to bypass your E unit. Uh, the only disadvantage there is, of course, then you can't run the engine in reverse. But... Um, I mean, there's a chance you got a bad coil, but I'd say nine times out of ten, it's the e unit. Hey, SMT, did you know that in April, when Can Canadian Pacific Kansas City uh, did a tour of their newly acquired trackage due to the Canadian Pacific, I'm going to see Canadian Pacific 2816, the Empress of Kansas City. That's really cool. Do you recommend the EV model mo intermodal cars? I think I've seen those on eBay. Um, I, I've never used them, to be honest, so I can't speak. I know some people that have, and they seem to be okay. But honestly, I did the calculations when I was buying my intermodal cars, and I found it was cheaper to buy the Walters ones. Plus, I already had a Walters one, so I knew the quality. So, I don't know. If, if buying something brand new really matters, maybe it's worth it, but otherwise I'd probably just go with the Walters ones. SMT, I have a Santa Fe F9 that has two missing back wheels. Thoughts on a fix-it? 
My way was machining axles and install these, but I want to see what you say. Well, I don't know what brand it is, which um, makes it a little harder to say, but you can usually find a donor locomotive. Um, a lot of brands use cross compatible parts. So like, let's say it's a Bachman, you could just find a broken Bachman engine and probably take the wheels off of that. Just as long as it's a similar year. But um, yeah, I don't know. Trying to machine your own parts would be a bit of a challenge because uh, not only do the wheels have to be the right size and everything, but they also have to be isolated on one side or you're gonna have a short circuit, which is no fun. ASMT, are there big differences with Marklin rolling stock? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think most of Marklin's stuff is AC, which means that you can't run it on DC track because both the outer wheels are um, connected. It's possible they made some DC stuff, though. Do you have any 70 ton diesel locomotives? My grandpa got one, made a video on repairing it because of you and I was inspired. 70 ton diesels. I think somebody sent one in recently, but um, I don't think I have a working model of one, unfortunately. Did you know older Tyco diesels, you can replace the power torque drive with an older uh, Mantua MU2? I think it fits in an IHE slash Mahano and some steamers. That's totally possible. I know that for the last year of production, the Tyco steam locomotives were actually made by uh, IHC slash Mahano. For our first time DCC locomotive, should I buy a DCC installed engine or a DC engine and install decoder? I would probably buy a locomotive which already has a decoder just so that you can get to grips with DCC and kind of learn what how it's supposed to perform. And then uh, maybe try and install later on. Unless it's DCC ready. If it's DCC ready, it's really easy because all you have to do is unplug a socket and then plug in the decoder but yeah if you have to be soldering one in there i just buy one that already has one Hey, SMT, have you heard of the Hilton crash where a VIA train smashed into an uncontrollable Canadian national? One of the Canadian hoppers went into a passenger car. Yeah, I, I have heard about that. I was at the pet store the other day, and apparently Nerf has made Nerf Cat into an actual product line. Is that true? That would be hilarious. I mean, the entire Nerf Cat meme kind of started because Nerf had made a product line called Nerf Dog. And uh, I never would have thought of them to make a product for cats. It just seems kind of silly to me. Uh, but if they have, that's great. I'll have to have a look for that. I got a Bachman 440 locomotive, which is DCC ready. How hard is it to put a decoder in it? It's not that hard, you just need to uh, remove the shell, and then there's a small 8-pin socket. You just need to pull that out, and then plug in the 8-pin socket of your decoder, and throw the shell back on. I got a Bachman 440, okay, uh, already read that comment. Hey, SMT, I have a Bachman Siemens charger, and it has DCC and sound, but it doesn't work. Not even any sound or lights. Hmm. Um. So, so is the engine running, or is it not? Like, is um, sometimes to get uh, the sound to work, you need to go through a startup procedure. But uh, if, if the engine's not moving, uh, I'd say there's definitely some sort of an electrical problem. Probably with the decoder. 
How's Nerf Captain doing? He's been doing a lot better. Um, I was really worried a couple weeks ago he was quite ill. And we thought he had pancreatitis, but it turned out he had just uh, eaten something bad. And so we gave him some anti-nausea meds and he's uh, living life and breathing air. So I'm pretty happy about that. But uh, yeah, he's hanging in. Do you like the Johnny Cash train songs? I really do. I th he did a terrific job and he made so many uh, hits with, uh, with railroad related stuff. I think my favorite is probably the uh, one he did about the Rock Island line. Hey, SMT, what's one thing you dislike um, slash most would want to change about this layout? I think the thing that I really want to see happen here is integrating the rest of the layout because I find most of the time when I'm running trains, it's almost always in this spot. And what I want to do is I want to run a mainline track through here and then link it up so that trains can actually use the entire circuit. And uh, just overall finish this side of the layout because I find, you know, it's just kind of blank space. Um, you know, get the mall built and extend the freight yard. There, there's a lot that's going to happen once this curve is pushed out. So that's, that's the main goal right now, but I'm putting that off to the side and focusing on actually getting that done for now. How's the Hershey factory going? The Hershey factory is good. It was completed a couple months ago and uh, I'd say it's not looking half bad. You want any G scale equipment? Uh, I can't say I do, no. There's a zero series Shikansen. I actually rode the zero series a long time ago. That must have been something. Somebody was uh, telling me, because I just uh, did a repair video on this, and uh, somebody was telling me they were still operating these things into around 2008, which is pretty wild in my opinion. It's amazing that they lasted that long. 44 years of service. Really not bad for a first-generation high-speed train. I just realized this was uh, running in the tunnel. What's the worst model train company in existence? Uh, that would have to go to Bachman. Bachman's not horrible. Um, they're just not my favorite because I feel like they overprice for things which are not the greatest quality. But to give them credit, like they've come a long way. Like Bachman trains in the 80s and 90s, you know, they were rolling out really junky products with crappy gears that had a lot of problems and. You know, they've made a lot of improvements and actually making the engines all wheel drive and adding more weight to them, adding better lighting systems to them. So I'll give them credit. They have improved, but their prices have just gone to the moon. So, um, yeah, they're not the best. For the fellow with the DCC train that doesn't put any thing put the loco on a dcc test track and see if you can read the cvs if you get no response there could be a power pickup problem that's uh, terrific advice there Corey. bachman trains are better now especially especially branching yeah i agree with that they've come a long way i just wish their prices were not so high because there was at one point in the 2000s where they had improved the design significantly they're making better products but the prices were still low and then over the last 10 years uh they've just every year been bumping up the prices it was interesting actually another youtuber let me just get this engine going and I'll tell this story. Hmm. 
cars are all snagging on something there. I'll have to get that sorted out. Yeah, so what I was going to say is another YouTuber uh, did a test, uh, I think G G2000. I can't remember his channel name. He's uh, another big name in the community. But anyways, um, he did a price comparison where he took a Walters catalog from uh, 2008 and he compared it to a 2023 catalog. And he just did calculations to see um, the difference in prices over the years. And most of the manufacturers were pretty close to what they were in 2008. You know, they've just kept up with inflation. Some of them are actually lower, so they've gotten cheaper. But Bachman was not on that list. Almost all their products had gone up like two, three times the price. JL Will 2000. Yes, that's the name. SMT, whatever happened to the Bachman Acela that fell off the train table? It's still running. I still got it. Tyco's stuff sure looked cool, though. The earlier ones had way better motors. Yeah, I mean, I'll give Tyco credit in terms of actually making interesting model trains. They, it was the deal. They got, you, there's no other manufacturer that's made anything like the Golden Eagle or the Silver Streak or the Tyco Turbo Train or any of the other stuff. In terms of making exciting products, they did a terrific job. And uh, yeah, those, those earlier ones from Mantua with the MU2 motors, those things were tanks. A lot of those are still running today. Uh, it was just when they got into the power torque era, that's where I feel like things started to kind of unravel for them. And uh, it's unfortunate because I feel like if they had avoided the power torques, like, I don't know if they would have made it in the modern day, but I feel like the company would have made it into the 2000s. I mean, they were out of business by the early 90s, so I think that that might have played a role. Can you run the Shikansen Zero Series? Yeah, we can make that happen. Should I switch my layout to DCC? Depends what you're doing. If you're doing a lot of switching with uh, multiple locomotives, I would probably go to DCC. But if you're just kind of running trains like I've been, I'm just loosely around the layout, I would just stick with DC. It's a lot cheaper. But it all depends on what your uh, goal is. Hey, SMT. Uh, I need help at the TSF Santa Fe, which are made by Tyco. It moves further occasionally. It will lock up and then it won't move. TSF Santa Fe Switcher. I'm not familiar with that exact model, but um, I would check out the gearbox. It sounds like there might be something stuck in it. I mean, even if uh, one piece of ballast gets caught in one of your gears, it can cause things like that to happen. That's true. I bet if they stuck with better motors, they would have made it to the modern day. They could be making like DCC Silver Streak or something. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say because I think part of might have, what might have taken down Tyco was also the fact that they were making very unorthodox trains. I mean, a lot of what they were producing didn't actually exist. There was no Golden Eagle. There was no Silver Streak. There was no uh, Canadiana. But um, I, I think people cared more about the quality of the motors because River Rossi, you know, is still around and they were, you know, making similarly detailed diesels at one point, so... You know, I'll grab the uh, outer freight train when it comes around on the next rotation. We'll get the Shikansen out.
Favorite locomotive in the collection? Probably the Hiawatha. If Tyco made quality stuff, they'd probably still be around, much to the dismay of the rivet counters. It'd be cool. I, I wish there was still one really budget brand out there. Another Mahano. Mahano, I don't know. I mean, they technically still exist, but those were just the deal. The old IHC engines, those were very uh, modestly priced, and, and they were good quality, too. What's the most rare and unique consist you've got, and can you run it? Uh... Well, in terms of an entire train, it probably is the Shikansen. Uh, in terms of locomotives, it's the uh, Hiawatha. There's not too many of those around. Have you ever heard of Rail Pro System? It's a kind of DCC system, and for the life of me, I can't understand why it's not more popular. If you haven't looked into it, I think you'd find it cool. I'll be honest, I haven't heard of that either, but uh, I'll have a look later on. Do you have any Revell models, and can you give me some tips on how to fix my Lionel GS4? No. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that the Lionel GS4 you have is probably uh, one of the Kadar drives. So it's basically a Bachman engine. Unfortunately, those have a very common problem where the axles on the inside split. So maybe you can see this on the outside. Look at the drivers, and if one of them is kind of bent, like you got four wheels and one of the outer ones is bent or two are bent in the middle, you've got that problem. So the only way to fix that is to take it apart and actually fix the axles. It's not an easy thing to do, uh, unfortunately, but I might be making a video on how to fix that Canadian National one. So if you're willing to wait, uh, hopefully I'll be able to fix mine and maybe that could be a tutorial for you as well. Tyco had some potential, but they kept making the same things and started to use worse. Nobody bought their items and they started to get cheaper. ATC Colby, just a bit of a PSA for anybody who needs help or advice relating to models. Model railroading, there are related discords that can be great for getting help. Yeah, discords uh, got some servers, and there's also uh, places like Reddit. You can post on like our uh, slash model trains. There's forms, tons of old forms you can post stuff on. So... Uh, yeah, so especially if you're looking for something really particular, because early on, the, the whole reason this channel was created was actually because I didn't know how to upload a photo to a form, and that form was on how to fix up a River Aussie Hiawatha, and there were a lot of great people on there who had some good advice, so... That can be good. How often do you just run trains, like not filming or trying to get views, but just running them for fun? Uh, probably, uh, I don't know, one or two times a week. The trains are definitely run off camera. Sometimes I'm just testing stuff. Other times I'm, I'm just kind of playing around with things. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I also sometimes run stuff, uh, like have like friends over or whatever, and they just want to see the layout. I'll get a couple trains going just so that they can actually see it working shape. Looks like we've got a super chat from Bio Shut. Yeah, SMT, I was wondering what model controller you're using that has the amp draw gauges. It's an MRC Tech 3 9500 series. You can find them on ebay for usually about 120 dollars
They got so much worse over the years. The steam locomotives especially run horrible. The Mantua engines are pretty good, especially their Heritage Limited steamers. Yeah, the I don't know, Mantua was, was a very different beast uh, compared to regular Tyco. They definitely cared about quality. I mean, the old uh, Mantua steam locomotives definitely have their problem too. Um, I have a lot of people contacting me asking why their old Tyco or uh, old Mantua steamer runs way faster in reverse than it does forward. And, and that's just because there is a washer on one side that was prone to wearing out because the motor is usually um, in a forward position. Um, but but they, they're, they're hard to break. I mean, I've seen some of them that were made in the 50s or 60s and they've still got their original motors, still their original gears, uh, clearly with a lot of hours on them and they're still running, so. Yeah, they uh, can't be underestimated, that's for sure. I've got a really old uh, Mantua Spirit of 76 Diesel. Um, thing looks like it's been through a war, but it still runs. So, yeah, they were not bad. Those five-pull motors, those MU2 drives, those were solid. I think you should look into Rail Pro sometime. Honestly, I think it has more potential to be the best DCC system out there. Why it's not more popular is beyond me. Okay, so it's a DCC system. Yeah, I'll definitely have to dig into that. Athern, Atlas, or Walters for me. Those are three brands I'd certainly recommend. GSS Railway, congrats on the milestone. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Can you run your Canadian National U1 class 4842? Yeah, sure. Are you going to build that airport? Did I say I was going to build an airport? I don't think I'd have space to. Maybe I could uh, designate a field on the layout and just have one of those kind of runways with a Cessna or something. Or maybe add a lake to the layout and that could be... Uh, designated as an airport my grandmother uh, used to have a cottage by a small lake um you know in uh forests of quebec and i remember on on some mornings you'd hear a guy firing up his plane and he'd take off from the lake and i just thought that that was the coolest thing that you know this place in the middle of nowhere basically had its own airport i mean not really it's not really an airport but it kind of is SMT, why don't you have memberships? I'll uh, be honest with you, Sparky. Yeah, I just don't really know how the whole uh, membership thing uh, works. I, I think it's kind of like Patreon, but I, I haven't looked into it in detail, so I'll have to dig into that. Can I just get some cars behind this? I think I'll... Uh, how should I do this? I'll get the Shikansen back out onto the main line and I'll try to get the Amtrak cars behind the steam locomotive. Should have thought of this before I uh, put the Shikansen back on. Any snow yet? We've had a bit of snow. Nothing uh, too significant, but it's been there. Better slow this down before it goes crashing into the back of the uh, steam engine over there. I bought a new Atlas Gold DCZ sand locomotive and it had a bad motor out of the box. I couldn't reset it to factory settings, so when I read the decoder, nothing showed up. Ended up being a bad motor. Wow, I'm surprised. I mean, if, uh, I find most people like Atlas. They seem to have a fairly good reputation. I find most of the people who uh, complain about having a problem, though, it's usually their engine is missing a decoder. So I've heard stories of people buying a DCC-equipped locomotive and it doesn't have a decoder. 
Um, on the flip side, I've also heard stories of people buying a regular DC engine and getting a decoder. And funny enough, I was actually one of those people. Uh, a couple years ago, my grandparents got me an engine. It was supposed to be DC. I put it on the track and it was making sound. So um, clearly there's, there's some mix-ups happening at their factory. Yeah, I think the Shikansen's pushing the uh, 482 off the layout. Some decoders will not read if the decoder doesn't see a motor or a connection. I learned that myself. Huh. It looks like one of the cars actually derailed. SMT, please read this. Are you going to be getting the 100k silver button from YouTube? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It has to be verified, but um, we'll see. I sure would like to, though. I can just picture it right now, going right up on the shelf. If I do a 100,000 subscriber special, I think that's how it's going to start. Let's see. Like, well, folks, in today's video, and then start unboxing the play button. That'd be cool. SMT, please can answer. Could you run the SMT mainline Berkshire? Sure. We'll uh, run the Canadian National one first, though. If Canadian Pacific Kansas City held a STEAM program, what do you think would be part of it? Hopefully, uh, 1201. I'm not sure what else. If you get it, please do an unboxing. Well, I think it would be fitting for the channel. Been watching SMT Mainline for a while. I do like the repair videos, but the unboxing videos are cool too. I'm an N scale gal, but I used to model in HO when I had more space. Congrats on 100,000. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's that is one benefit about N scale. You can definitely uh, make a lot more with not so much space. Can't even imagine if you put two four by eights together with N scale. I mean, you could build the freight yard of a lifetime. Tyco Mantuas were made from 1952 to 1974. Power torques were made from 1975 to 1991, and there were some Mantua Tycos from 1988 to 1993. SMT, can you read this? Is it possible for you to run a custom train you made? Sure. I'll run this uh, thing first, though, in the SMT mainline engine. Whatever happened to the homemade rail speeder? Uh, the project just kind of fell by the wayside. The track out in Wakefield, unfortunately, has become quite grown in, so that was becoming a bit of a problem. And um, I guess the city also just doesn't really want people walking on it anymore because uh, they've actually put up signage in a couple places saying it's compromised or whatever, which I don't really think is true, but whatever.
Hey, SMT, how's it been going? It's been a while. Congratulations on 100,000. I remember even before 10K, the good old days. Yeah, yeah I was getting to a few comments mentioning. Oh, sorry about that. Got a derailment again. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of people. It's great to see so many people who were, you know, here in the early days of the channel back when there was, you know, 1,000, 10,000. Still uh, here all these, late, all these years later. Been watching since 50k. Does your father ever join in on the hobby? Um, he comes down here quite often while I'm working on stuff and, and we'll have a look. He had a model railroad when he was a kid, so he definitely uh, has an appreciation for it, but um, not as much. Sparky, I've been watching since he had 1205. Yeah, I remember that. Sparky was uh, the second subscriber on the entire channel. SMT, you should go back to the name Scrumptious Model Trains for 1,000K. I'm pretty set with SMT Mainline. I like the name better, but um, yeah, a lot of people will, will remember that. Hey, guys, I'm asking if... Okay, and no. Do you have any Shea locomotives you can run? I don't have any working ones, no. David Z to G scale, welcome. Do you think $40 is a good deal for an old Atherton locomotive that runs flawlessly? Seems pretty good to me, yeah. SMT, can you please run the Davy Crockett with some cabooses? Yeah, sure, I think we could probably make that happen. It might not work on the layout. Hey, SMT, do you know what? Recently I went to an auction and there was a guy selling an entire uh, model train collection. He had a lot of Canadian railroads slash short lines. I bought a train painting. Do you have any? I don't think so. My uh, buddy Nick managed to pick up a painting of uh, 1201, which was a uh, train which used to run up to a town called Wakefield, but uh, I haven't bought any myself. I'll have to go looking for the Davy Crockett. I'll also grab the uh, SMT mainline locomotive before I... Uh forget. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure where the Davy Crockett's at. Oh, actually, it's right there. Never mind. Are there any manufacturers making high quality HO train set these days or is everything still Bachman the only the only decent sets are Caddo's? Caddo's sets are good. Um, I was pretty happy with the Walters set that I bought a couple months ago. I think the only thing that I was sort of disappointed with out of that was the track. Um, I found it was a little bit tricky to get it together properly and it caused some derailments. But other than that, uh, it seemed like a pretty good set. Not sure. Uh, Atherton, I don't think makes sets anymore. 
Yeah, I'm not aware of too many other manufacturers. Did you run an Amtrak train? Well, uh, technically we are. And we'll let this go around for uh, one more rotation. We've got the uh, SMT mainline locomotive on, and then we'll try to run the Davy Crockett. Do you fish? Uh, no, I never have before, which is funny because I'm uh, big into boats. I, I have a couple boats, and I, I love taking those out and going up and down the rivers in the Ottawa Valley, but uh, no, never been fishing before. Is there a miniature model railroad club on the layout somewhere? Yeah, there is. Uh, I'll quickly uh, show that. Congratulations on 100,000. Can you run the SD70 ACE with the 50K car or the 25 car? I can't remember. I should report that guy said, yeah, 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 it's all good. Um, Yeah, we could definitely run that. I got a few requests in the queue right now, so we'll run those first, but um, yeah, we could definitely make that happen. Can you run the Wakefield train with coaches? I'll try. Um, I'm falling behind with the queue a bit, but I just want to show this off. Um, yeah, this is a uh, miniature club. There's this guy from... Florida, this guy from Florida named Mike, he uh, built this whole thing over a series of months. He builds a lot of little modules and things like that, and he sent this thing in, and uh, it's really cool because it's one of the few uh, things on the layout which actually has a completed interior, and uh, the detail is just terrific. There's a video somewhere on the channel about this. Hundred thousand. I remember when this channel was at fourteen k. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's really been in the last two years that uh, things have really shifted. Like the channel's been around since twenty sixteen, but in those early days, there wasn't really much content on here. And I think I made like four videos throughout the entire year twenty seventeen, and then in twenty eighteen, I just started uploading a little more regularly and. That's where uh, it, it started to change, and then about a month, I think between January and March, it went up 100 subscribers, and then, yeah, up to 1,000. Been here since two subscribers. Yeah, hot red Rodney. I remember that. The only thing this live stream is missing is a double D dirty Dan. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder where Dirty Dan's at. There must be a new guy here, joined at 97. Uh, well, I still appreciate it. It's funny, I was uh, up all night when it was getting close to 100,000, and um, it took, I think, a, about a hour to bring in the last five subscribers, and it was like 3 a.m., and it was up there, and I just saw, like, the subscriber count would go up, and it would, like, drop down, and it would go up, like, by two more, and it was just, like, kind of fluctuating that entire night, and I was like, oh, come on, and then when it finally reached there, I was over the moon. It's 
Thunder Turbine 88. SMT, I've been looking for an HO scale Shikansen for a while. I found one, but I don't have the... Oh, okay, message retracted. I can't finish reading that. Great, great accomplishment. You do great work. Thank you. I made my wife subscribe. I appreciate that, Corey. When will you get to your YouTube plaque? I don't know. A lot of people have been asking about that, but uh, I didn't know this. I kind of just thought if you hit 100,000, you just got it. But it turns out there's actually a process your channel has to go through in order to acquire it. So uh, I, I guess my channel is being checked right now to make sure it's eligible. And if it is, they should mail one out. Iron Horse Productions, I haven't watched your videos in a while. How are things going? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. I subscribed when you made the replica of the Runaway Train Consist. That was such a fun project. I don't know. It really uh, takes me back. I'll have to get that back out for the winter. Start running it again. I think it needs some repairs. But uh, yeah, of all the things I've ever built on the on the channel, I, I always wanted the Runaway Train. That was like kind of a dream of mine. So, you know, I wasn't really sure how to get one. And uh, yeah, I just started slowly painting up everything one piece at a time. And uh, yeah. Hey, Dirty Dance Trains! Your ears must have been ringing because everybody was just talking about you. <laughs> SP Productions. Wow, we've got a ton of uh, original subscribers coming in here right now. Turn the lights on, the SMT Berkshire. I tried to do that. Oh, there we go. Maybe it's a different button, I can't remember. Oh, there we go. Sparky says, you say his name and he joins the channel. Dirty Dan, yeah. Harry Warren. Another uh, vintage subscriber, wow. <laughs> all the OGs, all, uh, all stopping by. How's Nerf Cat doing? He's uh, he's hanging in there. I was saying earlier, uh, he was a little sick a couple weeks ago, and uh, we were all kind of worried about him, but he seems to have bounced back and continues to boss us for food and stuff, which, uh, frankly, I'm more than happy to see. I'd, I'd rather him be doing that than uh, being quiet, because when he's quiet, it means he's not doing well. Have you heard of the Virginia Creeper? It was a short line in North Carolina. Johnny Cash was going to buy, but I don't know if he ever made a song about it. I No, I've never heard of that, actually. Okay, here's the full comment. I've been looking for a cancer for a while. I found one, but I don't have the money. It sucks big time. I bought a Challenger recently. I'm waiting for it to arrive. DCC Sound equipped, by the way. Well, good for you. That's uh, that's awesome. What's up, dude? I'm waiting to buy a house to build or something like this. Love the setup. That's the dream for me. I'd, uh, I'd love to have a place to uh, move a lot of this stuff into. SP Productions, it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, I feel like it has, yeah. Norman Corey, did you ever show Dan the Dodge picture I made and sent to you with the logo on the door? I don't know if I did or not. Julie Forner, hey, um, sorry, I'm probably not pronouncing your name right. Congratulations on 100,000, bud. Can you run the SD70AC with the 50? Yeah, yeah, sure, I'll definitely uh, run that. We'll put it behind these freight cars. I wish they hadn't all bounced off the track here.
People buy old school buses and make them into mobile homes. I want to buy one and make a mobile train room. That'd be fantastic. You could just drive from train show to train show and uh, have the whole setup ready to go. Fan of the office, eh? I am a fan of the office. I was a fan of the office back when it was uh, still on the air too. I mean, I was only like five years old or whatever, but uh, it was great. Every day after my uh, dad would get home from work, we'd uh, all be upstairs. I'd pull out the Lego bricks and start putting things together and they'd have the office on. And it's one of the few shows that even as a kid, I actually liked. And obviously I didn't quite understand the plot, but you know, it, it had its moments, which I just found hilarious, usually involving Dwight doing something. Like the uh, episode where he has the snowball fight with uh, Jim. A lot of great moments. Dirty Dan, I just wanted to stop by shortly and see the channel. Good to see it's still rolling. And again, thanks for uh, stopping by, Dan. Hey Harrison, I thought I'd pop by for a bit. How's the new layout? Uh, have you made any progress on it? Not uh, any in the last few days, but I think tomorrow I'm gonna head out to the hardware store. I'm gonna pick up some uh, materials for that and uh, actually build a fascia around it. And after that, it's gonna be uh, paper mache painting and then just finally getting the ground covered down. Pennsylvania Railroad or NYC, uh, choose wisely. If I had to pick, which wouldn't be easy because I like both, uh, I'd probably go with Pennsylvania Railroad. Turn the lights off and turn the lights on the layout for a moment. Okay, it's gonna take a moment here. I don't even know how many of these uh, lights still work, to be honest with all of you. Let's see here. Okay, I need to have one light on because I don't even know if the lights are, uh, are plugged in. Yeah, the light controller doesn't have any power. Opinions on RBP trains. Uh, I haven't seen too many of his videos, but uh, from what I have seen, I, I like the channel. Seems like good content. Just ran and got an extension cord. I'll see if I can get this uh, controller plugged in and find out how much of the town is actually still lit. Anything come on? <laughs> there we go. I like that. I 
Of course, the rest of the layout doesn't really have a lighting system, so uh, all that's all blocked up. But uh, the town doesn't look too bad. Even the concert's uh, still got a good lighting system. I can hear the SpongeBob music already. Yeah, they did have a song for the night, didn't they? Anyways, I think we'll get the lights going again here. SMT, have you heard of the sister, third sister HMS Britannic? Yes, the third sister of the Titanic. I, I have heard about uh, that ship. Sorry, I just clicked the wrong button on my controller here. That's not right. There we go. Yeah, I've uh, heard a lot about the Britannic. I find it kind of fascinating because uh, it's actually still almost totally intact, which is remarkable. You have a nice home layout. Thank you. Walter still has a few sets available, but as Harrison says, track is proprietary. Sparky's an electrician. He'll come restore power to the town of SMT Mainline. Now, yeah, why not? Hey, ASMR, can you run the big boy? <laughs> uh, still got a few more requests to go, but um, yeah, we can, we can get the big boy. I like the channel being called uh, ASMR, though. I think that that'd be great. Hey, Harrison. Get a 3D printer, 3D print stuff for your layout. Good ones can be 150 American. Filament is like $30 a roll. What about the SD70 AC you're going to run? I haven't forgot. I was actually grabbing the uh, car so I can connect the uh, 20K subscriber car behind it. Yeah, I'd love to uh, get a 3D printer. I don't know what to get, though. I'm, I'm not knowledgeable on that. So if anybody has a suggestion on a good 3D printer something i'm willing to spend you know some good money on to get a good one because i would love to get something that can uh, i don't really like it you know some of the 3d printers are uh, the what they create looks a little rough like it's kind of jagged so my guess is that the higher end ones don't do that so if you have a, a higher end one that's reliable it's not too difficult to use uh, let me know The Mars Eaglo. Maybe a resin 3D printer. Prusa MK4 is around $1,000. SMT, I don't know if a Walter set is better than a Bachman. What do you think? Uh, other than the track, I think the Walter set is better than the Bachman. The locomotive is, is almost certainly better. I've had Walter's engines uh, since I was a kid, and they've never given me any problems. So I don't know. I, I'd be surprised if you had a problem with one. I don't know why this thing uh, is going through two startup procedures, but we'll just roll with that. 
My son is just getting started in the hobby and he bought his first engine. He faithfully watches your channel so he knew what to do and look for at train shows. Can you say hi to Victor? Yeah, hi Victor. That's, uh, that's great to hear. I should do more videos on how to buy a used uh, train set because that is something that a lot of people tend to ask. I was trying to get back into HO recently, but can't find any sets that aren't worth crud. Yeah, oh, they're all pretty expensive. I can't remember what the uh, number for this one is. Twenty-five seventy-two. All right. Resin printers offer better detail, but limited size of a print. Do you know what a walleye is? Oh, it's a type of fish. Oh, I've got like ADD or something. I, I just <laughs> read the number and I've already forgot. I got distracted by the walleye comment. 2572, 2572. I'm not going to forget this time. Yeah. It doesn't even work. That's weird. There we go. Opinion on 2101's restoration. I'm not familiar with that uh, locomotive. I'll pretty much support the restoration of just about any locomotive, though. I mean, uh, as far as I'm concerned, anything being preserved is, is good in my books. A walleye or just a wall with eyes? Yeah, well, I don't know. Even though I, I don't fish, I do know... Uh, a bit about that because um, in uh, being a boater it's good to get familiar with the bodies of water you're operating your boat on just so you can learn where all the rocks and stuff are uh, but a lot of the maps which uh, tell you where hazards and stuff are also tell you all the good fishing locations and what kind of fish reside so learned uh, learned a bit Do you know what happened on the 11th uh, or the 10th of November, 1975, ship-related? I'm guessing that that's the date of the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, but I'm, I'm not an expert on that stuff. And this uh, locomotive, it just goes over certain switches and then it shorts out the entire layout. Very strange. Hmm. I wonder if the wheels on this are out of gauge because it's, it's definitely snagging a bit. Let's have a quick look here. It's kind of funny because all my other uh, diesels don't have that problem. That wheel sets in order. Mm. That one's a little snug. Yeah, it's, uh, it's possible this is the problem. A few of them are off just ever so slightly. I wonder if that's why. Anyways, I guess we'll uh, run something out the Evan Fitzgerald. Oh, I was right.
Britannic was originally going to be named Gigantic along with Olympic and Titanic. Yeah, I, I heard about that name change. So they decided to name it to Britannic just because they felt like Gigantic was a bit pretentious. So, I don't know. Br Britannic is kind of a prettier name. My favorite of the bunch is always going to be Olympic, though. Run triple seven. Yeah, sure. Perky, my last live stream, what do you think of the Mevo 3 camera setup I had going? Would you like to do something like that as well? I think it's genius. Definitely uh, avoids the whole shaky cam problem, which I've had quite a few times here on the channel. And uh, for anybody who doesn't know, Sparky was actually doing a, a setup yesterday off this multi-camera setup. It was pretty cool. Santa Fe abomination. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just gonna run the layout on DC. I don't know if these will both run backwards or something though. No, oh, something's shorted. I wonder what that is. Sparky, I was gonna do I was gonna try the next live stream with those camera next Friday at 7 p.m. Well there you have it folks if you want to go uh, check out Sparky's live stream next Friday at 7. Anyways, let's see if we can get this uh roll in here. What are the best metal wheel sets you'd recommend these days? Uh, Rapido makes a pretty good one. They make, uh, I think it's called like Rapido Bits and they make two sizes. They make one for passenger cars and one for uh, freight cars. What are the skulls in the background? They're uh, Halloween decorations. Huh, maybe there is actually something wrong with this switch. It's now the second Trinity rail there. What are things snagging on? There's, there's something that locomotives seem to be catching on. It's also derailing this car every time too, which is kind of frustrating. Atherin scale trains, exact rail, inner mountain, and Walters all make re great wheel sets as well. Have you ever heard of the GAN? Yeah, I have heard of the GAN. It's a... Uh, Railroad operated in Australia. I, I saw a uh, video about it years ago on a show called Extreme Railways. Pretty unique uh, operation. I was actually uh, thinking about ordering a uh, GAN set because Fratesci makes one. And... Uh, uh, it looked okay. The only thing is they're kind of tricky to import to Canada. So they're not sold to the Canadian market, so we're going to have to figure out how to get one here. But I would like to have a, a GAN locomotive.
Agreed, Harrison. A Olympic got a raw deal in history. He's the lead ship of the class. Only had a career. You don't see many paintings, models, books about it. Yeah, it's one thing, um, you know, getting back to the whole Titanic thing, which uh, is, is sort of unfortunate, which is that, like, the RMS Olympic was, like, a hero. You know, it helped Canada and the United States win the First World War, and it defied the odds, like, you know, for a ship of its size... And considering both of its sister ships sank, you know, the odds were certainly not in its favor. And yet it managed to uh, last its entire career, including having a torpedo hit it. And um, yeah, the only thing that really, you know, prevented it from going further was the depression of the 30s. The economy was just too rough, I think, to maintain a ship and it was getting old. But, you know, it, it's it's funny how the Titanic... Um, you know, is famous because it, 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 everything that could go wrong did go wrong. And the Olympic, which was a ship which defied the odds in the exact opposite way, you know, everything went right, is almost completely ignored in favor of, of a total disaster. It's very, very weird. I'm sitting at work watching the live stream. <laughs> Most of the old photos of the Titanic are of the Olympic. Yeah, that's another thing. Most uh, pictures people see of what they believe is Titanic is actually uh, of the RMS Olympic. So um, it's like, I guess, ar arguably, it's famous because of that. But um, yeah, I don't know. Everybody, the, the Titanic was always hyped up, you know, at the time as being the biggest ship in the world. It, it actually was only just bigger in terms of weight, not in terms of like the width or length or anything like that. So. I don't know, kind of a misleading figure. Harrison, I'm on the 4x5 tables building an MPC 2001 single engine house. Huh. I just got back from a train show. I picked up a Sperry Rail service locomotive, a rare find. I, I don't know what that is, but uh, yeah, good for you. ASMT, what HO scale train set do you think would be best to start with? I recommend the cheaper ones. Um, it doesn't really matter with what brand, but just the smaller sets. So I'd just pick up the cheapest that you can. I mean, get something you like. I don't just buy it because it's cheap. But, you know, if you can find one of the cheaper sets that you do like, buy that. And then uh, with the money you save, not buying one of the bigger sets, um, I don't know, throw in an extra locomotive or some more track or anything because... I just don't find a train set on its own is super exciting. I feel like, I don't know, there's, there's, there's got to be something else to do. Can you run the go train? I could certainly throw it in front of these freight cars. I saw the GG ones and I got a running AHM for $43. It's super light, but runs enthusiastically for an 80s model. Well, I, I think the uh, old River Rossi's, uh, old, old AHMs, I should say, were actually made by River Rossi. So, yeah, those are pretty solid. Um, you know, they're, they're not the greatest pullers out there, but they're very reliable. I've got like four of them and uh, I haven't had too many issues. Sparky, will you be getting a Rapido Christmas mystery box that comes with a chocolate bar and ornament for your tree? I Yeah, I'm thinking about ordering one of those, maybe two of them. They seem like an amazing value for your money because in uh, if you convert the Canadian price, which is $300, that's... I, I don't know. I, I think that's like 230 American, and you get a DCC sound-equipped locomotive, a piece of rolling stock, an ornament, a piece of chocolate, and uh, I believe a vehicle. 
and you know, a DCC equipped locomotive, that's worth $300 piece of rolling stock from a pedo that's worth probably another forty dollars and then a car that's worth like another 20 bucks so there's definitely some savings there i guess the only catch is that you don't actually know what you're gonna get life's like a box of chocolates you never know what you're gonna get <laughs> have you heard of the empress of ireland um can't say i have Hello, I thought I remembered you mentioning you're restoring a classic car. If so, a replica would be somewhat cool on the layout. I kind of have one. They don't make uh, an HO scale model of the Oldsmobile Regency, but... Another derailment. Uh, they do make a Chevy Caprice, which it's basically the same uh, design another C body I believe I believe that's the term for it I can't entirely remember but uh, this this looks almost exactly like the uh, the classic car I have the main difference is just the grill and obviously the Oldsmobile was a little more luxurious but yeah other than that they're they're very similar it's a great thing uh, uh, the old GMs is that you know the Cadillac and the uh, Impala and the Regency and the Delta 88 yeah, they all basically used the same design, just slightly different engine and transmission. Other than that, everything's the same. So sometimes if I can't find a tutorial on, on how to fix something on the car, I just search up how to do it on a Chevy Impala, and then there you go. But, uh, I haven't been doing much driving with that. That car's had a lot of problems. Just uh, Actually, I took the old water pump out of it because that failed. So I've got to put a new water pump in it, but when I took it out, the hardware kind of looked like junk, so I'm trying to source new hardware. You can find a million water pumps for it. Those are no problem, but trying to find the hardware for the water pump has been uh, a bit of a nightmare because they sell the bolts, but they sell them individually, and uh, they don't make it easy to find part numbers. So I've been slowly uh, tracking them all down. Weird question, but what was the worst in build quality you've seen from a well-known company? Hmm. I don't know. There, there was one. Uh, this is not really a, a company that was known for making reputable stuff, but uh, there was a Tyco which still had flashing on the gears and it was binding up. That was disappointing. That's a factory defect. I haven't seen too many factory defects. Um, I think the most notable is I opened up a Bachman and it was way over lubricated. It was packed with a lot of grease, like probably three times what should be in there, but it, it ran okay, so I don't really know if it's fair to, to knock them for that. I don't know, I feel like I've definitely encountered one, I just can't remember. It'd be a, a good question for all of you though. What's, what's an engine that you bought right off the shelf and it had problems? It's crazy how the layout's grown over the years. I remember when you just had the main part before the expansions. Yeah, it's certainly changed. Could you run the Blue Goose? The Blue Goose is uh, still out of commission at the moment. Say happy Veterans Day. Yeah, well, uh, a huge uh, thanks to all the veterans. I know it was yesterday, but uh, really do appreciate everyone's service. The Rapido Hudson, it worked fine for two laps and now does not have sound.
my 1950-1057 unit diesel marks O scale O scale set. What uh, what went wrong with that? I'm trying to run this off DCC here. My Broadway Limited Imports K4 Streamlined Locomotive Paragon 3 in general are known for having random pickup issues. My Model Power DDT Shunter did two laps and it started to smell bad. Actually, that was uh, one engine which I had a problem with. I bought a Model Power 040 and uh, it would sometimes just stall, like the motor would get stuck. I don't really know why. And uh, the other problem it had was uh, one of the wheels kept popping off it, like it wasn't fitted to the axle properly. So, yeah, not so good. Use marine grade plywood. Uh, if, if you're talking about for layout construction, I actually have used uh, marine grade to build all of this. It definitely does help because it won't really warp due to moisture or anything. Model power just seems like a basic beginner set at a cheap price I would not recommend buying. Well, they don't exist anymore, so you don't have to worry about too many people finding their stuff at stores, but... Um, they, they were not all junk. Uh, there were a lot of good model power releases. They uh, had some of their engines made by Roco, and those were pretty solid. And uh, even some of the regular engines, uh, which were basically the same as AHM. They didn't have the greatest motors, but a lot of them were not that bad. What was the hardest restoration on an HO scale locomotive? Probably the uh, Canadian National RS3 I worked on about a year or two ago. Uh, the previous owner, it hadn't been built right, and then they had thrown a bunch of lubricant in it, and then it probably sat for 40 or 50 years. So it was an engine which was incorrectly made, and then it sat, which can cause problems. And um, yeah, trying to get that thing going was just a nightmare. Yeah, I'm happy with the results, but I I was very close to giving up on that engine because I had just been trying so many different things to get it to work and everything was failing. Uh, yeah, that was probably one of the more frustrating ones. Controller Packers, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. My local store has a stockpile of like new 15 model power locomotives in brand new condition for some odd reason. Well, maybe they uh, bought them when they were uh, going out of business. They might have been being sold at a discount. Any plans for a turntable or roundhouse edition? I would like to. I don't think I have the room for one. I mean, I could, I guess, sacrifice this train yard and put a big roundhouse there. That would look pretty cool, actually. But I don't know. I think I'd prefer to have a second freight yard. I remember when the channel hit 5K and your family came down here to congratulate you. Yeah, that's right. Forgot about that. I was just at like the very tail end of um, 2019 too. I think it was like right before, or nearly right after Christmas.
you ever shop on trains? I've bought uh, some products from trains before. Uh, I don't usually buy them through uh, their website. I usually just uh, buy them off their eBay store and uh, I haven't had any problems so far. I find their prices are decent and uh, the description seems pretty accurate. Trying to get my phone on the charger here. Do you have a favorite hockey team? Uh, probably the Ottawa Senators. And right after that, it would be... Um... Hold on a moment. Yeah, the Ottawa Senators are the Montreal Canadiens. But definitely not the Leafs. <laughs> Are you doing an Xmas train contest this year? Yeah, I don't see why not. SMT, do you have any Athern steam locomotives? I've got a few uh, Athern's... Uh, Athern steam engines, though. I have a Mikado from Athern. It, it doesn't actually run that well, though. Markland knows how to make a turntable themselves. They're hell expensive three rail AC for Markland. I toured their warehouse and they've got multiple buildings just unloading bought layouts. Apparently they came they come to your house to pick up model trains that they buy from you. Wow. That would be an exciting place to work. I, I think it would be a bad place for me to work though, because I'd probably be opening up boxes of stuff and be like, oh wow. This would make a good project. Just haul the entire box home. But uh, yeah, that's really cool. I wasn't aware of that. Sparky, everybody hit that thumbs up. Tell you to be earned the right to get that platinum play plague. <laughs> My dad thought you were a Leafs fan. No, I'm not a Leafs fan. I, I'm more just joking about that. I'm not really uh, into sports that much, so I, I don't care a crazy amount. I'm just uh, I'm going off. I don't know. Let's, let's, my dad was uh, not a fan of the Leafs, so I sort of just adopted that. We saw a Leafs game years ago in Ottawa. I'm pretty sure they actually won that one, but uh, most of the time uh, they're not doing as well, so that, that that's all good with me. It's hilarious, though, uh, back when I was um, in school, I was uh, in vocational school there in uh, auto mechanics. My teacher, he was a huge Leafs fan, and there was a, a dispute between them and uh, basically you know, a lot of the other people in the school because being in Ottawa, you know, it's mostly uh, Sens fans. And uh, the art teacher was, was so bugged that he actually made a special sign pinned it up right in the uh, auto mechanics room and it just said the Toronto Maple Leafs. Maybe hockey just isn't their sport and it has like a picture of golf clubs. I always like that. You'd be sitting and running trains the entire shift. Yeah, I think that'd be a great job. Just opening up old boxes of stuff, testing stuff out. Modern day Atherin, from what I've heard, are abysmal for their steam locomotives. Not sure about the old Atherns, though. Well, Atherin was kind of strange in the sense that they didn't really make a lot of steam locomotives. Like, Atherin's a well known company. They've got just about every diesel you can imagine, but um, I can only think of like a couple old Atherin steam engines. And uh, yeah, in terms of modern Atherin, uh, there just doesn't seem to be as much out there. So it's, it's kind of funny that they decided to. Uh, focus in on making diesels. I'm a licensed uh, HAM operator and I'd be going crazy if I worked for a radio shop. We love to correct new, collect new toys, but a 5,000 transceiver would be a problem.
Hey SMT, what would you recommend for online shopping since a lot of train shops have closed? Well, there's eBay. I kind of feel like that one goes without saying. Um, like I was saying earlier, I have bought from trains.com or I bought through trains.com through eBay and I have had good experiences, so I guess they're all right. Uh, I think Train World is good. I've heard a lot of good things about them. Uh, I've never actually ordered from them because shipping in Canada is costs an arm and a leg, but um, I don't think that would be bad. I know that uh, OVR Trains uh, apparently is a pretty good online program. I've ordered products from them once and I had a positive experience, so that's another one. That's about what uh, comes to mind. Uh, it's a better question for the whole community though. What, what do all of you do when you want to buy a train off the internet? Where do you get it from? We'll exclude eBay just because it's uh, kind of everyone's go-to. Sparky says OVR. Atherin's current lineup of whoops. Atherin's current lineup of diesels are really good. The only criticism I have would be they're pulling powers wildly inconsistent. Huh? I wouldn't have guessed that to be uh, a problem from Atherin. I find uh, most of the people who don't like Atherin, their their main complaint is that like Atherin basically takes you know diesels they've been making for 10, 20 years, and they just add a few details and kind of call it a day. Like they're not huge innovators, you know. I every time I bought an Atherin engine, I've I've certainly never been disappointed. But I can see how if you were really you know looking for something highly detailed, that'd be kind of frustrating. I get my trains from my dad's friends, so I get them for free. Well, that's a pretty good deal. Um, Jeeper Preacher says uh, trains and model trains for mo and model train stuff. I don't know if model train stuff is a store. I haven't heard of that one, but uh, yeah, trains and model train stuff apparently. I've been using trains when they have stuff I want, so another vote for trains. Trailer Packers, if you ever hit. Pennsylvania try to hit up Straxburg excursions. I've been watching their VR rail a lot. That's definitely a place I'd love to visit Chris Danielle OVR is not a good place if you factor in shipping you may as well have shipped local Huh And Aspen says generally OVR's prices are hard to beat so we got we got another vote towards OVR it probably makes a huge difference uh, depending on whether you live in Canada, the United States, because um, when you're shipping anything over a border, that's where the prices start to skyrocket. So, like, that's why I haven't ordered anything from Train World. It's because their prices to get, I don't know, I wanted to order one engine. I think they wanted 40 or $50 for um, standard shipping, which to me just seems wild. SMT, what brand is your Shikansen? Uh, is it a Kato? It's a uh, KTM. I don't. I, I think it's Kat, Katasami. I'm pretty sure that's it. It's a brass manufacturer. I don't know if they exist anymore. OVR, if you're in Canada. Sarah Smith, uh, hey SMT, congratulations on 100,000. I've been a subscriber since 50K. I love your train store videos and your train show videos. Just one random question. What's your favorite wide cab locomotive? Wide cab, uh, I think a Dash 9 would count, no? Da if, it, if, it, if a Dash 9 counts, it's a Dash 9.
SMT, I have a few questions. If trains weren't your hobby, what would it be? Do you have any G-scale stuff? And what is your favorite Southeast Railroad past and present? Why? All right, uh, so if trains weren't your hobby, what would it be? Well, my second biggest hobby is uh, boating. I'm a huge fan of boats, so probably more boat-related stuff. I'd probably just focus in on that a little bit more. Um, do you have any G-scale stuff? I don't currently have any uh, G-scale trains. What's your favorite Southeast US railroad, past or present? I don't know if it counts as Southeast, but uh, I've been really uh, looking into the history of uh, RJ Corman, and uh, it's really fascinating. So uh, I don't know, I like the way they operate and I like the history. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's far enough South to count, but um, yeah, I'm a pretty big fan. I'm actually looking to order a couple uh, RJ Corman engines. I live in the United States. I bought from OVR once a pair of diesels, even with shipping, they were still cheaper than any of the other retailers in the United States. Wow. I've gotten a few things from Walmart. Kits were cheaper ordered online from them. Most of the stuff does come from eBay though. Maynard's carries a lot of trains. I think Mary Maynard's carries a lot of uh, O-scale stuff. I'm not as familiar because uh, we don't have Maynards in Canada, but I've, I've seen some other content creators uh, do tours when they release the different train stuff. Very expensive to ship from the U.S. to Canada. Yeah, it's, it's super expensive. It's even worse, too, because, of course, um, you know, if you're in the United States and you're shipping something to Canada, you're paying in American dollars, but if you're doing it the other way around, it's in Canadian dollars, which are worth 30% less. So, you know, you get like a shipping quote for $30 and then it ends up being more like 42 or something like that. Ah, uh, yes, uh, Katsami looking for one of their models right now. I might get more money. I'm jumping on. I've been looking for one of these for many years. Have you considered selling some products to upgrade in race uh, in radio world? We have swap meets. Does the train world do this? Yeah, we. Well, there's uh, a lot of. Yeah, it, it's basically a swap meet. Usually, it's just referred to as a train show or a flea market. But um, yeah, we've done some of those. I have uh, gotten rid of stuff. I've uh, usually when I when I want to get rid of something, I just do a giveaway. Um. But yeah, there was a train show earlier this year and uh, they didn't have any fees to sell stuff. And so I, I had some old equipment and I was just selling everything for a couple bucks a piece. I think at the end of the day, I sold like 50 things and made like $20, but um, it was good. I've never heard of that railroad, but it does sound southern slash eastern. Well, it's uh, it's Kentucky based, so not sure if that's far enough south. But um, yeah, the the history is very uh, interesting. I found out about it through their uh, steam locomotive, which they used to have. I kind of started digging into the company a little bit, but um, their uh, founder Richard Corman, like it, it's it's a real American success story. You know, it's about a small town boy. Uh, who came from humble means and he worked hard and he ended up becoming um, a f not a forklift operator but a backhoe operator and he was basically helping uh, to clean up old train wrecks anyway I guess he was quite successful with this and he managed to grow it into a company and then from uh, that they started you know cleaning up larger and larger train wrecks all over the place and then from there on they actually uh, went on to open their own railroad as well as the business cleaning up old rail disasters and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's really interesting. There's a, a whole documentary on it. And, uh, yeah, I watched it the other day, so... Hey, SMT, I wanted your opinion on the movie 13 Hours. I've never uh, seen or heard of 13 Hours, so I can't say. I 
Rusty Rail says, can you run a T1 trust? Yeah, we can make that happen. Also, uh, OVAR, I'm in Canada too. All right. I spoke with someone who lives in Australia who won about 300 American dollars worth of trains at cabin fever auctions. He said that it came to about 550 Australian dollars but didn't know what shipping was going to be. Ooh. If you're referring to RJ Corman, BNSF, I think does some interchanging with them in Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, I, I think that that is the same railroad because uh, I think that they work as a short line to provide for uh, BNSF, Norfolk Southern. I think all the big seven, if I'm not mistaken. What do you think of North Alberta Railways? Uh, I'm not familiar with that railroad. Uh, I do like the uh, paint scheme that BC Rail and Ontario Northland uh, have though. Hey, SMT, I've been watching the channel for a while now, and you got me into the hobby. Can you please run the Chesapeake and on fire locomotive? Sure, I'll, uh, I'll get that out, and I'll get the uh, T1 out, as I said I would. Personally, I would say seaboard system coastline because some people and their old paint schemes look cool before CSX and others came along. Harrison, is this the longest time you've ever ran the Berkshire? It seemed like it's getting a good workout. I think so. Goes to show uh, how well it's made. Hasn't had any derailments. I'll switch it out here. I don't know if the uh, Chesapeake and on fire is going to be able to actually pull this train, but we'll, uh, we'll give it a go. Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll try to set it up on this free train here, switch it over. Thanks for uh, stopping by, Sparky. Are you aware of any South Korean manufacturers, Harrison? Nothing that comes to mind. They might exist. I, I don't know. I unboxed something the other day, that, that rail vehicle, and it was... Uh, what was it called? Ironworks? I can't remember the name. It's in the video, but I believe that that was uh, made in South Korea. Anyways, let's see if this will work. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, the reason this is called the uh, Chess Beacon on Fire is because uh, a couple of years ago I did a video where I unboxed this thing, and uh, the seller claimed this was a good running locomotive, and I think some 30 seconds into running it, smoke started like billowing out of it and uh yeah it was not doing well a 
Well, it started. <laughs> it doesn't sound particularly happy. Probably just needs to warm up a bit, honestly. Oh no. Oh, there we go. <laughs> this thing's running terribly. that this might need to be serviced. I'll put it on my workbench. I mean, now that I'm looking at those wheels, I'm kind of not surprised it's not running that good. Yeah, I'll give it a overhaul. Hopefully that will uh, get it going again. Anyway, we'll try to get the uh, T1 running now. Hopefully it doesn't catch on fire. Yeah, I was kind of wondering if we were about to see a part two of that. Don't forget the T1 for Rusty Trails. I'm way ahead of you. still power in the track. Whoops. I remember when that engine started smoking up. Yeah, that was weird. The seller for that engine, it's got to be one of like the weirdest, um, you know, buying experiences as I've ever had. Cause you know, I, I, I paid $50 or something for that engine, which was a little over what it was worth in my opinion. But you know, I was like, oh, it's got a cool paint scheme. It's one of a kind. You know, I was worried somebody else was going to get it. And when you have an engine that's been custom painted, you know, it really is one of a kind. So, you know, ordered it up supposed to all be in good condition. I get it, it doesn't run. And, you know, I, I just, I sent the seller a message, you know, can, uh, like, I get, like, a partial refund or something, because I still wanted to keep it. I was just kind of bummed, because I thought I was going to have to go shopping for a new motor. And they were like, no, if you don't like it, you know, you can ship it back. And uh, we had a, a bit of a dispute about that. And then I, I sent him the video, which was... You know, just to kind of just show him that I wasn't like lying about it. And then he finally agreed to a partial refund. But it's so strange, you know, it's like you would think that they'd be like happy that, you know, you don't, they don't have to deal with collecting the engine, relisting it, and now listing it as something which doesn't work because it was burning up, you know, rather than refunding you $10. But um, yeah, they're really stubborn with that one. I hope he gave him a bit. No, I gave him a good review because, I mean, he, he finally did, uh, you know, follow through with the refund. But uh, I just, uh, I find it really strange. Uh, I don't know that, that they weren't more negotiable because I've had some other sellers and they're almost too nice. Like there was this one guy I bought a locomotive from and he didn't know what he was selling. And I thought it was a powered model and he had listed it as a powered model. And then when I got it, I discovered it was a dummy. So I contacted him. Uh, just to see what he was going to do. I didn't even ask for anything. He refunded the entire amount. And he's just like, hey, man, uh, if you can just leave a positive review, you know, I'll give you the entire amount back. And I was like, okay, like, that's almost too nice. Uh, but yeah, with this other guy, it was really weird. It was a, it was a real, uh, real dispute because, you know, uh, the thing is, like, if somebody's selling a, a junked engine and they're honest about it, you know, like, that's, that's on you, you know, it, to you to repair it or whatever but what bothers me is when somebody's selling something and they make all these claims about it being in good working order and they sell it as a price which reflects such 
and then you get it and it doesn't even work, you know, if you file a dispute, you know, they, uh, they argue with it. It's like, okay, well, you, you know, you misled me. It's like, don't, don't make claims about something you don't know. Random question. Do you know Casey Jones? Yeah, I know about Casey Jones. Interesting how the uh, T1 was shorting that first uh, trip around the layout, but it doesn't seem to be having any more problems. I'm referring to Casey Jr., the train from Dumbo. Uh, no, I, no, I'm not really aware of that. Unfortunately, not all eBay sellers have integrity. I'll, I find most of them are pretty good. Like, I don't know, 95% of the time when I bought something off of eBay, I haven't had a problem. And that uh, small percentage of the time when I do, most of the time, the sellers are really good about, um, you know, help helping me out. Like, I, I had some defective decals I ordered a couple months ago, and they sent me free replacements, so that was good. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's funny. There's just a few who are, I don't know, stubborn. They just want to try to trick people into buying junk for top dollar, which I just think is bad. Like, you know, I don't have a problem with people selling things that don't work and stuff. But, you know, the big difference is if they're honest or not. I find the real place where you find uh stuff which doesn't work and they'll tell you nice things about it is facebook marketplace man if you buy something off there you gotta really be careful Saying, could you run a Canadian or a uh, Union Pacific SD40-2, please and thank you. Yeah, we could probably make that happen. It might be the uh, final train of the night because uh, it's almost 11. I think everybody upstairs is probably trying to head off to bed, but you can definitely throw that on there. Can't remember if this actually runs all that well, but yeah. Buying model trains off sketchy websites, Facebook Marketplace Edition. I'm, I'm actually looking out on Facebook Marketplace because I would love to do a video uh, where I actually find something and drive out there and pick everything up, like a big lot of stuff. But um, everything that I've seen in the area has either been ridiculously overpriced or it's just junk, you know? I did actually do a Facebook Marketplace video um, that was really random circumstances. I was just browsing and 
like, right as I got to the end of, like, browsing, somebody had, like, listed a huge lot of locomotives, which is not something you usually see on Facebook Marketplace. And so I immediately contacted him, and uh, I lived pretty far away, so we actually arranged for shipping, which is not something... I don't think you should really ever do that on Facebook Marketplace, uh, you know, if trying to get somebody to ship something to you, you're, you're opening up such an opportunity to be scammed, but in that case, uh, I don't know, I was willing to take the risk, which was pretty stupid, but it ended up working out, but uh, yeah, that's the only time I've, I've ever bought trains off a of Marketplace. Oh, this thing doesn't run very well. I put that on the workbench to uh, repair. Kristen Yell, I sell junk for top dollar. It's up to the buyer to do their research. I'm completely honest with what, with what I have. The problem is it's really easy to click and buy something even when it's overpriced. But that to me is fair. Like if you're being honest with them about what you're selling and you're including pictures of any damage and stuff, like that's not a scam. That's you know again that that that's on the buyer. But you know, I'm more talking about when somebody says, "Yeah, man, this thing is in perfect working order. You're gonna love it. It's gonna be the best train of your life. It's in mint condition." And then you get it and it doesn't work or it starts to burn up or something's really screwy about it. You know, then you know if somebody's charging top dollar. I consider that a scam. Uh, it's all it's all about the honesty. You're right though. The the price is up to the buyer. Train layouts that are on marketplace don't seem too badly priced. They're at some I'd buy when I live in Alberta. I don't know. I find I don't know if it was uh, 2020, but s something happened and uh, the prices all just skyrocketed. Like I remember, you used to go on Facebook Marketplace or Kijiji, and you could find stuff pretty cheap uh, in terms of model railroading equipment. And then uh, something changed, and it's like all the old Tyco sets now are like a hundred dollars. I've never been scammed by a model railroader on Facebook Marketplace. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Um, I know people who have been, unfortunately. And again, just because there's not that same... Like on eBay, bad feedback can really hurt a seller. So they are motivated to avoid doing anything too sketchy, which is, I find, why they're usually better. But um, yeah, I find on Facebook Marketplace, you know, you're just trusting that that other person's honest. And I think the model railroading community in general is pretty good. So I think in, compared, in comparison to other communities, you're probably like less likely to be scammed, but uh, they're still out there. I remember um, my buddy Nick bought a couple locomotives from some guy in Alberta and um, trying to get him to ship them out took months. And then when he finally did, they arrived damaged. The whole thing was such a mess. I monitor local Facebook Marketplace trains listings, see what may show up in person at the shop when it doesn't sell on Facebook Marketplace. Huh. Controller Packers, good night, Harrison. Congrats on 100. Thank you so much. Great thing about Facebook Marketplace, though, is it makes for great repair videos. Well, that's a good point. In that situation, I'd agree with you, SMT, it would be a scam. Yeah, exactly. It's just, uh, it's just about how it's all listed. I basically only buy broken stuff. That way I'm never disappointed. Sometimes I'm surprised when it actually works. I've had that happen a couple times uh, where somebody's actually like underrated how good something is. They post it and they say it's broken and it actually does run to some extent, which is really cool. That's kind of going above and beyond. Anyway, I'll just read out a few more comments and then I think we'll finish things off. Uh, I have a bad habit I spend until I have minimally left. Any tips to avoid this? I seriously need to save money. Oh, I don't know. I'm no economist. <laughs> Go watch, um, what's that guy's name on YouTube? Financial Audit. That's a, that's a good show. It's a good show. I've actually learned some uh, cash saving tips from that. A 
and some of those items are for sale. Anyways, I think I'll, uh, Dave Ramsey, oh yeah, yeah, this is a similar show. Anyways, uh, I think I'll uh, finish things off there. Thank you so much for uh, joining in this evening, uh, appreciate it, and uh, thanks for all the comments for uh, congratulating the channel on 100,000, really do appreciate it, and I uh, hope everybody has a terrific night.